Dear Cynthia, dear Renato, dear audience, thank you for having the opportunity to talk to you about two very important items. First, the Pentacam AXL accordance for IOL power calculation, our first results to be presented, and the impact of possible ocular surface disease to quality of vision. These are our financial disclosures from Heidelberg University, where I'm staying right now, and our lab laboratory is cooperating with nearly all companies on the market. So, this is the setup in our hospital. You can see on the left side in the, uh, the carograph 5K from Oculus, together with the new model Pentacam AXL in combination with the Corvus, and on the other side, the Minoptometer 4P. The Pentacam AXL is used for axial length and 3D scan measurements, which are taken in succession on the same measuring axis using the same centering function as it is described in the brochure, and the complete available IOL database is included in the recent software, which means even IOL optimization can be performed on your side, which means that you have to include only 50 cases for the regular formula, whereas for the HIGIS formula, where the antechamber depth is very important, you have to add 150 cases to have a clear optimization for your IOL constants, respectively. So it's network compatible, and the use for the new software is that it's faster. The scan process is going very fast, and even more denser cataracts can be measured. So this is the biometry setup. What you can see here and in the, in the middle, after taking six average length measurements, the intelligent uh, software picks out every outliers statistically before calculating the, uh, calculating the real axial length dependent on the signal uh, noise ratio, which should be very high in order to achieve a perfect length results measurement. So these are the IOL formulas which are currently included, which means for normal or virgin eyes, the regular formulas you are using in daily life practice. But even after refractive surgery cases with no histories and history formulas, Barrett True K and the double K formulas from Holiday Wear, which are using keratometry values instead of only the keratometry metric uh, refractive values for the Barrett True K values. And the Toric IOL formulas, the Savini calculator and the Barrett Toric calculator are integrated. So what will you see when you uh, perform the IOL calculation for the right and the left eye? You can read this chart just from the beginning to the bottom. Here are placed the real measurements from the right eye and the left eye, corneal values, axial lengths, and the regular values of surgically induced astigmatism and what you want to end up with. And here is the suggestion for a regular eye with f um, measurements of different uh, for, uh, calculation formulas. Here the Holiday, the Barrett Toric, the Savini Toric, and the Barrett, and for the left eye the same. This is what you can print out very nicely. You have the same summary of your refractive measured values accordance with, for the regular eyes, the HIGIS calculation for a standard lens. Here it's the Acrosoft IQ, SN60WF, and the Barrett Universal formula compared to Holiday and SRKT, and in the blue line, in the blue uh, column, the lens of choice is pre-marked. You, you can choose, uh, according to that, what you want to gain for your patient's expectations. And on the right side, this is the TORIC-based uh, calculation for the Acrosoft TORIC IQ, a lens as in 6AT, it's in toric steps from 2 to 9, and you can nicely see the suggestion of the formula, and you can see the results according to the change of axis in combination with the residual, uh, residual refractive error you will achieve with this calculation. This is a small glimpse into the near future. We will have a carometry overlay working in the OR together with your OR microscope, and go into more details for analysis of a retrospective case series of nearly 400 eyes from a separate eye hospital of Bad Rotenfelde from Dr. Fell. We used, they used the Pentacam AXL in the latest software version and compared these measurements with the IOL Master 500. Exclusion criteria for this study were all eyes after refractive surgery and inclusion criteria was the quality score for IOL Master and Pentacam should fit and okay for both devices. All other measurements were skipped, and the postoperative visual acuity of more than 0.8 in decimals. Two lenses were compared, a regular spheric lens, the Alcon SA60, compared to the MA612 
five from human optics, and IOL constant optimization has been performed for all formulas without the Barrett Universal 2, which is still under construction and will be available in the next software version where we can deliver these results as well. This is something which reminds you to that what already Professor Conan has shown you with his excellent study comparing three devices, IOL 500, 700, and Pentacom AXL. And here you can see the values and the Pearson correlation coefficient for actual length measurements for the Pentacom and for the IOL Master 500. And when you look at a range of measurements with a minimum of nearly 21 millimeters up to nearly 30 millimeters, you cover the whole range of the patients which you discover in daily life practice. And the correlation between the two devices is nearly perfect. With regard to kerat uh, keratometry values, with the flat and steep meridian and the average radii, there's still a very high correlation within these two devices over the whole group. And if you look at the entry chamber depth measurements, you see they are still correlating very well. So even in the scatter plots for extra length measurements, for K values on average and for anterior chamber depth, you see the regression uh, line are still in the same quadrant, and this is very reliable for all two devices. Looking at the IOL calculation formulas, the four formulas on the left side here with the brown column for the IOL master and the blue column for the Pentacam, the four formulas, Heigis, Hoffer Q, Holiday One, and SRKT, these are optimized for the constants and the Barrett U2 is not yet uh, optimized, but you can see on this screen for the aspheric lens as well for the SA60 lens, the homogeneity of all measurements from both devices, whereas the Pentacam has a little bit less outliers compared to the IOL master, but you have nearly the same values in both devices. So. If we perform pre-cataract screening, we have first to look at the slit lamp and then have to decide what measurements we should do uh, with, uh, according with the ocular surface. We have maybe to analyze with a cataract graph. I will show you some examples. And with the Pentacam AXL, you have already seen what can be done even prior, even with Pentacam nucleus staging for measuring the density of the cataract in order to perform femdo laser cataract surgery or other types of phaco crack and chop. And the cataract preoperatively uh, uh, display will show you a, a surgical guidance according to that what you will have to discuss with your patient for the choice of the lens to uh, fulfill the patient's need with regard to higher or, uh, order operations to choose maybe a multifocal IOL or not. Cernic 4.0 in case of an aspheric lens is the lens of choice or axial and TCRP measurements for the corneal shape and astigmatic values compared to total corneal refractive power, as Thomas Cohn already showed you with this nice example of more than one diopter of astigmatism hidden in the back surface of the cornea, which you wouldn't have detected when you haven't used the total corneal refractive power map. So when you look at the left side on this screen picture of a nearly yeah, regular eye, you can see a small redness and the tear film amount is quite normal. But when you look at the tear film quality, which is an indicator for the non-invasive breakup time, you will see that it's closely affected even after four seconds, and this might affect visual quality. This is what the Keratograph 5M software puts out when you apply to the Yen Vistra Eye Report. You can see all these blue, pot, blue points in the red region are outliers in this uh, uh, six-fold uh, diagram where you can compare preoperative and postoperative measurements for the right eye and for the left eye as well. And coming close to the center, it's, ge it's getting not only more hot, it's getting more, sus uh, more suspect for having uh, problems with ocular tear film and tear film quality as well. Another example you should have to exclude before planning a cataract surgery is the form frisk keratoconus. You can see a pentacam measurement which clearly detects this, and this is something which is uh, to be done even before cataract surgery will be taken into consideration. The same with Fuchs endothelial dystrophy. You can nicely perform a corneal density analysis, the same as you have done with the lens uh, nuclear uh, staging with the PNS measurements. You can perform the same for the, uh, for the corneal uh, stroma. Even cases after LASIK and uh, uh, refractive keratoconus, uh, um, after LASIK and PRK, 
Uh, even when the patient does not remember he underwent such a, an operation even years ago, you can easily detect with only one single pentacam shot, and you can be aware of that, what means for a calculation of an intraocular lens in these cases. So just to give you an idea what means the follow-up for the patient after four weeks of surgery with a multifocal lens in place, tear film is still affected. You can see a, a still altered breakup time. It's less than seven seconds. And 10 weeks post-operative, everything is in the green area, which means corneal surface is perfect. And when you compare these results in the same patient with the binoptometer 4P measurements compared for visual acuity for near, which was only 0.5 uh, for distance and uh, for near at that time, four weeks after surgery in a multifocal lens, this is not a good result. And even if you look at the values of contrast sensitivity and mesopic vision without glare and mesopic vision with glare, you can see a clear improvement after 10 weeks postoperatively, which means visual acuity is not the only parameter we can measure because contrast sensitivity and mesopic vision without and with glare are even enhanced in these cases. And this is something we are very happy to perform these measurements even for our patients and for the surgeon's uh, perspective to have the right lens in place and make the right decision for us and our patients as well. Therefore, I thank you very much for your kind attention.